Yellow forms, please. Wait here. people in the Navy? Uh, no. Yours? Oh yes, my father's captain of the Unity. What does yours do? He's a writer. John Kipling? Come on, Kipling, where the hell are you? I'm a great admirer of your father's. Will you tell him I just polished off Kim? I absolutely loved it. Yes, I will, sir. Wearing spectacles? Yes, sir. Shall we start with the eyes, then, and work backwards? Alice teeth, where are they? Majesty is expecting you, sir. Thank you. Don't worry, I have it about me. I shall catch you on the way up. Thank you, sir. Stand on the cross, please. Turn around and read the letters on the chart, starting at the top. H A L. Without the spectacles? Two hours, 57 minutes. Yes! Ha! Oh, at last. Congratulations. Thank you, Your Majesty. Marvellous run. Awful close. Whiskey? It's a bit early. Oh, bugger the time. Got to toast your triumph. I've been tinkering with fourth gear. It adds a little something. Plus a new stretch of tarmac near Lamberhurst. To the shattering of the three-hour barrier on the Bateman's Windsor run. To the Silver Ghost. To the Silver Ghost. How's the family? Well, as we speak, my son will be plumb in the middle of his medical for the Navy. Ah. Big day. Absolutely. How's your youngest? Not good. Big heart, weak body. May I read you something? Far away. This morning's Times. Rudyard Kipling, speaking yesterday at a meeting attended by more than 10,000 people, painted an alarming picture of life in this country under German rule. Mm hmm You think they'd invade? I know they would, and our government will be there to welcome them ashore, soft-centred bloody tribe. The Prime Minister has asked me to beg you, those were his words, to hold back at this sensitive time. Why? He believes there's still a chance of avoiding war. He's wrong. He thinks your pessimism is premature. One million German soldiers are sitting on the Belgian border, ready for the off. It depends how you define premature. Right. Our heads are buried in the sand, sir. We have a tiny professional army. Our weapons are 50 years old. If we don't get our skates on, we will pay the price. But are you prepared to ease up a bit, at least in public? Certainly not. Glad to hear it. More whiskey? This is private property. You are trespassing. Please leave now. Mrs. Kipling. Now, please, and take your Kodaks with you. Is Mr. Kipling available? No, he is not available. You British journalists are unbelievable. You treat my husband like a zoo animal. Now, if you really admire him so much, you would respect his privacy. How would you like it if I came tramping over your garden uninvited? <laughs> Sir, 
You have a very distinctive face, and I would be happy to describe it to the police. Leave, please. The injured soldier. Thank you, Billy, sir. What an ever so impressive sight. How far did you fall? Fifteen feet. Allah be praised. Fifteen feet is high. Did it hurt a great deal? No. That was a stroke of luck. Now, your father tells me you've read the first Jungle Book. Yes. But not the second. No. Here you are, Arthur. Is Mowgli in it? Every page is chock-a-block with Mowgli. And I've written your name and my name in the front so we don't forget who we are. And I've done a very silly picture of you plunging from your apple tree, but that's in pencil so you can rub it out as soon as I've gone. Thank you. Kodak's in the garden again. Did you see them off? Oh, yes. Now, well, that's good. Derry and Toms are selling women's underwear in the suffragette colours. Purple and green stripes. Don't you dare. Ah, there you go, Josie. I never imagine her ageing. She's always seven, but she's always older than me. Funny. She'll be 22 now. And 32 days, exactly. Do you know what my mother used to call her? A little American. Really? Mm. She spoke with an American accent until the day she died. Much to my mother's delight. Jack! 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 Where's the Admiral? He's fixing the motorcycle with Peter. Well, how did he get on? They turned him down. He wasn't allowed to wear his specs for the eye test. For God's sake, do they want volunteers or not? It seems sensible to me. But wearing spectacles does not make one a bloody invalid. I didn't say... I am not rising to the bait. God, that is par for the course. Are you going down to see John, sir? I am. Could you tell Peter he'll be going home in ten minutes? I will indeed. Peter, your mother wants you ready for the off in ten minutes. Really? Really. Don't be downhearted, old man. I'm not. Good. The Navy has always been tough on that sort of issue. We'll attack on another front. What's the point of specs if you can't use them? I know it makes me spit blood. These people have no imagination. But we must buck up and look forwards. Did they realize who you were? One of them did. Right. Look, the army would be a completely different kettle of fish. I wanted to join the Navy. I know, but onwards, old man. What if I organise a private examination with the Army Medical Board just as a preliminary canter? We could go together. If I go, I can go on my own. Of course you can, but a bit of support might be useful. Be worth it. If it tipped the balance, have a think about it. If you put her through her paces, let me know. I'd like to see how she's running. I shall see you anon. If the Hun invades our shores, our English soul will be squashed and squeezed until it cries out in pain. The German will bring in his wake riot and starvation and bloodshed. The blood of our mothers and fathers, our wives, our sons and our daughters will drench the streets of our cities and paint our rivers red 
and after the war is over, when the riots in London and Manchester and Liverpool are quelled, when our raped women are huddled and still, what then? Ladies and gentlemen, I have been informed that 10 minutes ago, Great Britain declared war on Germany. <laughs> Our army of 160,000 must now face a German army of one and a half million. We must demand that every fit young man come forward to enlist. And that... And and that every young man who chooses to remain at home be shunned by his community. <laughs> Only our unity, our strength, and our courage can save us from destruction. <laughs> speech. Sandhurst, here I come. When did you join the Navy, Jack? Well, I've been thinking I'd see more action in the Army. You can't change your tune. I'm not sitting in the channel while you're all doing your bit in Belgium. I can't get to grips with it. Well, you must. A pince-nez gives a man a different expression as compared to spectacles. If the Army's desperate for recruits, they won't mind a pair of specs. It doesn't suit me. Yes, it does. Does it? I think it's good. I wonder if you shouldn't brush your hair back, away from the face. You've got a high forehead, it'd be a shame to waste it. What's a high forehead got to do with this? It's a sign of intelligence. It can't be. I'm assured it is. No, it's too loose, I'm not wearing it. Will it really make a difference to his chances? It's a medical, not a costume parade. Jack, I'm sure you're going to sail into the army, but your eyes are a serious issue and the overall impression will be vital. You've got to take a big pull on yourself. And really dig out. Now, see if that's a snugger fit. Better? Probably. Good. Have a stroll around the room, see how it feels. I'm not wearing it. Jack! You'll do more harm than good. He is not a boy. He is a young man. If you continue to pamper him, he will turn into something altogether weak and watery. Well, if he's a young man, he's old enough to make his own decision. This is absolutely his own decision, but I want him to make the most... You want? For his sake. It's Jack's future. Precisely. No, I'm not going to argue. Rudd, his eyes are not an excuse. The Navy gave him five minutes. Do you really think it's fair to encourage him? I would think it very unfair if I didn't. Breathe in and out. This shouldn't take long, it's all standard stuff. Quick look at the ears. I've always wondered, Kipling. Are they ears? How on earth do you think up the story? Well, inventing the story isn't the problem. It's putting the jigsaw together afterwards that can be troublesome. Pants down, please. Ah, it's the structure is a bit tricky, is it? Mm. My son's just polished off the jungle books. Absolutely love them. Cough? <coughs> I suppose you've read all your father's books? I've never read the jungle books. I don't believe it. Cough again. <coughs> Jolly good. Pants up. Clean bill of health? Yes, fighting fit. Just the eye test and we can relax. Spectacles off. It's a pince nez, actually. From the top, off you go. I, I can't see anything, I'm afraid. Nothing? Would you walk towards the board and stop when you can clearly read the top letter? T Q 
you. And the next line. Y O W. This is very serious myopia. We couldn't possibly. There are very strict guidelines. I think Colonel Brooks would agree. We were prepared to stretch a point. Indeed, but there has to be a limit. If he lost his spectacles, he'd be a danger to himself. And to his men. I'm very sorry. So am I. You haven't given the boy a chance. It's precisely the sort of inflexibility this country needs to get out of its system. John has so much to offer. It's a great shame. I agree. I do agree. Well, clearly you don't, or we'd be looking for a way forward. Nothing you can do. Hmm? Well, I'm not calling it a day. I shall write. I think it's utterly gutless. It's so spineless. Come on, John. We're off. My son's commitment is second to none. He deserves this opportunity and he will get it. Jack! Jack! I'm sorry. No, you're not. You're absolutely delighted. Best beloved brother. Bird. They turned me down. I guessed. Can I have a puff? Don't you hate this room? There's not one comfortable chair in the whole bloody building. It's true. I have to get out of this house. I can't bear it. I can't bear being geed up and encouraged. Better than being criticised. No, it's not. You see, you don't understand. I have to be with other people. Oh, thank you. No, not you. I don't want to leave you. I just... I want to be myself, that's all. Oh, let's stop this. It's boring. Shall we have a whiskey? Why not? What shall we drink to? Us. Best beloved sister. Best beloved brother. Don't you dare leave me alone, all right? Promise me you won't. Jack? It's very dark in here. I suppose it is. No need to be despondent about today. I'm not giving up. I can join the ranks. Well, hold your horses. I'll do whatever it takes, Dad. I... There are other avenues we can explore. What other avenues? What can you do now? No, I'm going to join the ranks. Don't jump the gun. I'm not jumping the gun. What a stupid phrase that is. Jack, let me look into it first. If that doesn't work, we'll consider your option. All right. And I'm thrilled you're so keen. And terribly proud. We'll get there. So. Hold on, old man. Very solemn. You will put out that cigarette before you go up, won't you? <laughs> Nobody supports the war more passionately than I do. You know that. But we've pushed him far enough. He feels he's failed. Talk to 
Ferguson at the war office. There must be a job there which would make him feel valued, and he'd be working with others in the same situation. He wouldn't be so alone. It'd be clerical. Well, if it has to be. Will you do that for me? Please. I must go. I have the British casualty figures for the first day of the battle for Ober Ridge. 458 officers and 11,161 men. On the first day. I'm afraid so. I can't announce that to the House. The effect on morale will be disastrous. This is precisely the kind of issue the Prime Minister wants us to tackle. If our brief is to tell the truth, but a truth which is bearable to the British people, do we dilute the figures? I think we have to. Or do we camouflage them by emphasizing the scale of the victory? Assuming that is that our troops took Ober Ridge. I'm afraid they didn't. The people should hear the truth. These figures will wake up every young man who's sitting at home twiddling his thumbs. He will read these and know his duty is to the men who've already sacrificed their lives. More effective than any recruiting speech. Publish the figures in the Times, I'll come up with some words to accompany. Field Marshal Roberts is expecting you. Thank you. The Boers taught us a simple lesson. In modern warfare, there are three vital ingredients. Speed, surprise, and variety. So what do we do? We give the Hun plenty of warning. We load our boys up like Christmas trees. And we forbid them to run. Recipe for disaster. <coughs> what can I do for you, Kipling? Bobs, I've come to ask a favor. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Good to see you. Good to see you, Ralph. I got your pint. Oh, thanks. Oh, God, I'm looking forward to this. Cheerio. So how's Sandhurst? Splendid. Really splendid. Hard work, but the spirit is wonderful. We can't wait to get to France. When will you go? Join my regiment next week, so... Soon, I hope. Why the delay with you? Oh, it's nothing. There are one or two issues. Issues? Including a regiment, that sort of thing. <laughs> They're from the Royal Sussex. They fought at Wipers. It's probably their first leave. Just deliver something for you. Oh, 
Yes. Thank you, Dallow. You marched up to one of your powerful pals. That's enough. Who's on the point of conking out. Leave it, Bert. No, I won't. Mother, did you know about this? No, I didn't. Why is he suddenly fit to fight? I'm in the room. I'm not a cripple. We are at war. Criteria change. Rubbish. He can't see five yards without his specs. What was the point of those examinations? Totally humiliating, and they all said the same thing. It's too dangerous. Well, frankly, Father, it will be your fault if Jack is killed. Get out. You should have told me, Red. Neither of you understand what is at stake. Yes, we do. I don't think so. What this country has achieved over the last 150 years is unique. We have built up, painstakingly built up, a family of nations. Oh, please, Father. Will you listen to me? A family of nations. And Britain, as parents, mother and father, has an absolute duty to protect its children. You're protecting the wrong family, Father. I'm sorry the War Office couldn't come up with something, but I'm sure you did your best. Mother. Congratulations, Jack. Now, you and I must sit down and make a list of what you're going to need. Go on. Not anymore, Bird. If we're going to produce food for the troops, we have to do it properly. We'll keep one small herd of shorthorns for beef. Otherwise, the whole estate will be turned over to root crops. Right. And what can we do to help, Hobden? Start digging, Miss Kipling. Come on, you fucking no ah! You're supposed to stop that ah! That tickle under the head! It's all you got! Come on! Quickly! This is no time for personal grooming, Kipling! Get your scrawny arse back in line! Come on! Come along, Mrs. Clark. Best foot forward. Up and to your left. Mrs. Wilson, up and to your right now. Miss Kipling, up and to your left. Mrs. Kipling, up to your right, thank you. Eighty percent of British shells were defective or duds. Our guns were so outdated and worn out that our shells fell short of the German lines, killing our own wounded, lying in no man's land. The few British troops to survive the battle ran back towards safety, taking with them a number of German prisoners. Our troops believed it to be an enemy counterattack and opened fire, killing all but a handful of our own men.
Thank you for this, O'Leary. Not at all, sir. Seventy-two, sir. Better, sir. Eighty-one. Come here. It's my turn to read. No, it certainly is not. Dear old things plus bird, <laughs> as you can see from the enclosed photo, I am no longer a mewling, squawking cadet, but a fully-fledged, highly commissioned officer. Let me see. You are looking at Second Lieutenant John Kipling. Show me. <laughs> Doesn't he look fine? Corporal O'Leary has prodded me and pushed me and knocked me into shape. He tells me I am now ready to command men. Raw recruits arrive from Dublin any day now. 20 of them will be my platoon. It's my job to turn them into hard-bitten professional soldiers. I am more windy about meeting them than about going over the top. Sir, five platoon is waiting outside, sir. Officer! On your feet, just lazy bastards! Up! I am Lieutenant Kipling. I'm your platoon commander. Together, we are five platoon, two company, second battalion Irish guards. Before you start your training, I want to ask you all a question. It's very simple. Why did you join the army? You. Me, sir? To see the world, sir? King and country, sir. Money. Safer for me to fight the Germans than be at home in Dublin just at the minute. If you know what I mean, sir. The thing is, whatever your reasons, you all volunteered. No one forced you to be here, and in a week's time, when you want to shoot me in the head, I'd like you to remember that. But I promise you one thing. I won't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. What's the matter, Daly? Are you tired? Would you like a nice cup of tea? Thirty, please. Come on, you shower that shakes. Thirty-four. Are you all totally? Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, forty. I think you should stop now, sir. You're embarrassing these ladies. <sighs> On your feet! Guardsman Doyle, 48. Guardsman Bow, 58. Guardsman McHugh, 77. Lieutenant Kipling, 93. I would like to tell you how the rhino got his skin. I am the Parsi Pastongi Bamongi, sitting in my palm tree, 
and you are all rhinoceri, which is what happens when there is more than one rhinoceros. And you have all come down for a bathe on the shores of the Red Sea. But to do that, you must remove your skins. Unbutton your skins, please. <laughs> Sit on your skins, please. Now, let me return you to the beginning. Once upon a time on an... Ah, Lieutenant Kipling. Down on the floor, please. Remove your skin. And sit upon it. Hello, Peter. Once upon a time, on an uninhabited island, there lived a Parsi from whose hat the rays of the sun were reflected in more than oriental splendour. What do you think of the moustache, Mother? You look older. Is that a good thing? Of course it is. I may be biased, but I like it. You look very dashing. <laughs> <laughs> You look very handsome. He looks very smug to me. You've got a secret. What is it? The battalion sails next week. I'm going to France. But why now? Couldn't they have given you any warning? Well, we knew it was coming. But it's so sudden. No, it's good news, old man. The waiting's over. So this is your last weekend? Yes. Here's to you, old man. You must be awful excited. I am. I wish I could be in your shoes now. Take one of mine, Dad. Thank you. must give up. It does the inside cupboards no good at all. Have they told you where you're going? Not officially. But we know how much hangs on it. I shouldn't tell you this, but the Great Advance kicks off on August the 17th. Your birthday? Exactly. General Haking says it'll be the greatest battle in the history of the world. Right. It's possible we may leave a few days before my birthday. I wondered if you'd write a letter to the regiment, giving me permission to go over before I'm 18. The greatest battle in the history of the world. Well, I don't want to miss it. I want to be in the thick of it. Of course you do. Who am I writing to? I have got some important things to give you. First and foremost, a bar of chocolate. Can I eat it now? Which you can eat now. Secondly, the key to my shed. My own key? Your own key. Do not lose it. And thirdly, a list of things to be getting on with. I want you to read it to me now so you'll absolutely know what's to be done. One. Oil the chain, once a week, not too much oil. Two, clean the plugs. I don't know how to. Which is precisely what I'm going to show you. When you come back. Yes. Will you bring me something? What do you fancy? A German shell. I shall try. Have you packed your spare glasses? Yes. Show me. Good. Jack! You ought to leave! Coming. You look so fine. 
I get those buttons so shiny? They're like mirrors. Someone does it for me, that's how. Don't worry. Corporal O'Leary will look after me. Well, I'll blame him then if anything happens to you. Jack! We're up against it! I'm off. I won't come down. All right. I will. Bye. Bye, bud. Come on, old man. Look after yourself. Go, Jack. <laughs> Go on. Sixteen officers from Wally Barracks have died already. And Ralph, killed on his first day. Frightening, a bit. Of course it is. You'll be all right. The sooner I get out there, the better. Absolutely. Yeah. Bye. On good form, actually. Very wet, but in good spirits. Bonjour, all things plus burn. <laughs> Just a hurried line to tell you I am A1. I have never been so fit. We march 60 miles in 36 hours. It is raining here like Hades. Will you send me an oilskin coat, one of those black things that the sailors wear in the North Sea? Could you try it on first, Dad? <laughs> it must be good and roomy. The Germans seem to be getting into their stride here. But we'll be ready. We'll write again soon if we ever stop marching. Dear love, John. 
60 miles. You must be exhausted. Is that thunder? It sounds like it. No, the wind has changed. It's from the south. From France. I'd rather go over the top than examine your feet three times a week, Bo. Oh, my feet are delightful. I wouldn't mind the gangrene setting in. Then they'd be after whisking me away to a nice warm hospital bed. Jesus. I bet there's creatures in there having a the meal of their lives. Look at this, sir. That must hurt. It does, sir. Is it the trench foot? No. No, the foot's a good colour. Did you powder me, Dwayne? Fuck off. Bring it here. Oh, Jesus Christ, that feels good. Oh, Jesus, that's lovely. Jesus. I've just had a terrible image of you in bed with your wife, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, fuck! Oh, my God, that was close. Any sign of Clary? No, sir. Your feet are important to me, Bo. I want them fit to dance a victory jig in the German trenches. To Jack. We're thinking of you, old man. It would be a happier birthday if you were here with us at Bateman's. But we're awful proud and wish you all the luck in the world. Happy birthday, Jack. Happy birthday, Jack. Happy birthday, Jack. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I have a birthday present for you, Kipling. When do we go over, sir? Tomorrow morning. 7.30. Upton suggests we grow a white cabbage called Holland Lake during the winter. Apparently, it's the only brassica that will stand the journey. Do you agree, Brett? I'm sorry, I wasn't. Is that a point? Uh. Do you want a story? No, thank you. Dear old things plus bird. Funny to think one will be in the thick of it tomorrow. One's first experience of shellfire in the open. It is great luck that my first action should be such an important one. You have no idea what enormous issues depend on the next few days. If we succeed, the war won't go on for long. We won't have any time for writing, so this may be my last letter for some time. So long, old dears. Dear love, John.
Ten minutes, O'Leary. Ten minutes! Check your weapons! Chins up, lads! Gas blood! Strap over. McHugh, how big could be strap over? McHugh! Fuck off, Bo! Jesus Christ, my gun's blocked. Shit, there's mud in the barrel. Oh, God, I've got to clean it out. Come on, come on, come on. Don't come piss on. in my direction, you filthy bastard. Don't be pointing that scabby cock at me. Shit, shit, come on. I've been shitting and pissing all day, and now I can't go. <laughs> Listen, when you go over, you will see chalk pit wood 500 yards ahead of you. Advance straight to the trees. Five platoon has been instructed to take pigeon baskets. It is of A1 importance that you hold on to these until you get to the German trenches. What are they for, sir? When you reach the enemy trenches, you will release your pigeon. It will then fly back to HQ, and senior officers will be alerted that we have done our job. Two minutes. He's supposed to climb out of the trench. Let alone fucking run. Sir! What? Sir! My pigeon's dead, sir! What? My pigeon's dead! What shall I do? Well, how do you know it's dead? It's lying at the bottom of the basket, sir. It's not moving. Oh, for God's sake! Do I have to take the basket across, sir, if the pigeon's dead? Well, no, if you're sure it's dead, then no, of course well, not. Shall I dump the basket? Yes, sir, dump the bloody basket, Bo. One minute. My fingers won't work. Thank you, sir.
Mr. Kipling. Thank you very much. Is that the post? No. He is not dead. <clears throat> Jack. He is missing. Believed wounded. He might not be seriously hurt. He may very well have strolled into HQ by now, and he may have got lost. That happens fairly frequently, you know. We should have stopped him. Hello, Bird. Complete success. One spare Aurelux battery, one edition tackler, and, this will please him, one pair of good bedroom slippers. He's been killed. No. No, he's missing. Missing? Believed wounded. He'll come home, then. He'll be fine. Bird. Why did you let him go? I didn't let him go. He went because he wanted to. You missed the point. God, you just... You've no idea. Don't you realise he didn't give a damn about your cause? The reason he went to get his head shot off was to get away from us, to escape this dark, depressing house, to be rid of us, to be rid of home. What does that do to your theories, Father? Is that, is that reason enough to fight? Is that an honourable sacrifice, is it? Is it? I don't think so. Ten columns of British infantry attacked along a six and a... I'm sorry I'm late. We were just discussing the Battle of Luz. I don't want you to... Feel Not that. at all, no. I still have a very hazy view of the facts. I'd appreciate a more detailed picture. Carry on, please. Please. The British bombardment was ineffective, 
and we ran out of shells after 90 minutes. German machine gun posts were undamaged. 385 officers and 7,861 men were killed or wounded in the first attack. The Germans already refer to the battle as the field of corpses. A further 600 Irish and Scots guards were declared missing, believed wounded. A substantial number of British troops were taken prisoner. We are investigating reports that these prisoners are being treated in an inhumane manner. However, in some places, up to 2,000 yards of enemy territory was taken, in spite of the cost, loose was a victory. I've had a good day. A good day. Would you like to hear what I've achieved? Yes, please. I have arranged meetings at the Irish Guard Depot and Swiss Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And I have written to the war office and five hospitals I know that have wards of wounded troops. What do you think? Excellent. And I have written you a list of people that I think you should contact to speed things up. You use your influence to get Jack into the army, you can use your influence to find him now. I'm going to the post office. We have more than 4,000 photographs of prisoners in Germany. Could you send us a copy of those? All of them. We'll only need the recent ones. No, I'd like to see all of them, please. Thank you so much for your time. One shouldn't necessarily expect the worst. All the information we're receiving about the battle points to a deal of confusion. I'd like to contact you on a daily basis. We'll get in touch with you if there's any No, news. I'd like to do it. What would be the best time to telephone? Once again. Oh. Let's do them tomorrow. I'll check them once again. Let's do them tomorrow. We need to sleep. Go to bed then. All right. Come on. Good job. Again. No, not if you're going to have them puff. I'd rather do it on my own. Carrie, we'll check them again. Pass me a photo. No. 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 You work long hours. Look. That is the cleanest motorcycle I have ever seen. How long did it take? All afternoon. I'm not surprised. Does your mother know you're here? Yes. Let's have a cup of tea and I'll walk you home.
can we have a story? Good idea. This is a tale of Captain Jack Kipling and Lieutenant Peter Carter, that's you, of the Bengal Lancers. Finest cavalry officers of their generation. Straight-backed, tight-kneed, keen-eyed. They patrol the Grand Trunk Road. Have you heard of that great road? No. It is the longest road in India, the backbone of all Hindustan, 1,500 miles and straight as a ruler. All castes and kinds of men move here. It is a river of life, all the world going and coming. But all the world stops to watch Lieutenant Peter Carter and And Captain Jack Kipling dropped by. Is Jack dead? Not certain, old man, not certain at all. Not even sure he should have gone in the first place. One more tiny question. Where did you see him? Was it the southern end or the northern end of Chalk Pit Wood? It's difficult to be precise. Let me help you. Carrie. Just a minute, Rudd. At the southern end, there's a large pond between the edge of the wood and the chalk escarpment. Now, in order to circle the wood, you have to pass the pond. Does that ring a bell? It does, yes. I definitely passed a pond. Well, that's very useful. Thank you, Captain Bruce. You've been incredibly helpful. I'm delighted to have been some use. Oh, you definitely have. Let me find my daughter and she'll show you out. Thank you. Right through here. Tired. Tired to the tiredest degree. Rudd? That is very encouraging. No, it is not encouraging. It is not encouraging because Bruce saw Jack at half past three. We already have at least three sightings of Jack alive an hour and a half later. So fascinating though Bruce's account is, it is utterly, utterly irrelevant. It is not irrelevant. I need to get the whole picture. We've got the whole bloody picture. That's the point. You no hope. No, I haven't. I haven't at all, but... One more sighting early in the battle does not constitute proof that he is alive. It's something. Oh, I'd like a cigarette. Oh, that won't help. Have you hidden them? I threw them away. Oh. I know. Not mine, Jack's. I found them ages ago. He should have chosen another author. I'm always dipping into trouble. May I see? That is exactly why you shouldn't smoke. Fouler than foul. Oh, 
I'll find you, Jack. We will. Can I help you? Is this the home of Lieutenant John Kipling? I recognize you from the pictures, of course. The men are after singing your verses at the front, did you know that? That's very flattering. I believe you knew my son. Very gentle. Very kind. What was your platoon? Guardsman Michael Bow, 7786, 5th Platoon, 2 Company, 2nd Battalion, Irish Guards. So my son was your platoon commander? He was always worried about my feet. Your feet? Powdered them the day before we went over. They were in a dreadful state on the count of the rain. Was it raining? Was it raining on the day? Night, on the Carrie. day with Jack, was it raining? Carrie. Please. Mr. Bow, we have been interviewing Irish guards every day for many months. You are the first soldier I have met from my son's platoon. If you know something, anything, that will help us we would be very grateful to know one way or the other would be a great release for the whole family. Please. Please. Do you know what I see when I go over the top? What? Game of football. The next regiment's attacking the Bosch with their rifles shouldered, dribbling a ball across no man's land. And there's a bloke striding out with a walking stick, l l like a gent on, on a Sunday jaunt in Phoenix Park. The bullets are all around me, like bees. A swarm of angry bees buzzing and racing past my ear. Jimmy Doyle on one side, the lieutenant on the other. Jimmy goes down. And I'm shouting, we're the only two left, sir. And my lungs are bursting, but we make it into Jerry's front line trench. And I'm lying there, trying to breathe. Lying on, lying on top of me. Take that, sir. That McHugh is why we're here. We're to attack and destroy the machine gun post on Point Smith 14. I'm not fucking going anywhere. You are. We all are. You're a murderer. You're a fucking murderer. I'm not a murderer, McHugh. I'm obeying orders. Uh, Casey, Joyce, McHugh, right flank. Both flin with me. Come on, boys.
By all accounts, he was very brave. So few of us have the opportunity to play our part properly. But he did. He achieved what he set out to achieve. He must have been in such awful pain. If you talk to wounded soldiers, they'll tell you the pain only sets in later. So he was lucky. It was done with quickly. Don't tell me he was lucky. He wasn't lucky or, or brave or happy. Jack was 18 years and one day old. He died in the rain. He couldn't see a thing. He was alone. You can't persuade me there's any glory in that. I believe there is. I can't listen to this. No. Oh, do you want me to go down on my knees and admit that I murdered my son? I will if it satisfies you. He's like, oh, me. No, do, you, do you think a single day passes when I don't consider that possibility? I think about it all the time, all the time. And what truly terrifies me is that if I am to blame, what have I sent him on to? if anything at all. How could I condemn my son to oblivion? How could I do that to Jack? But I miss him. I can feel his head on my chest. I can feel his thick hair under my fingers. I can hear him laugh. I can feel his heat against me.
will manage. Oh, yes, we'll manage. I don't doubt that. I'll go find Bird. Will you be all right? Yes, thank you. He would have found a way, even if you tried to stop him. He was where he wanted to be. I know that. I let him down. This, O oh best beloved, is another story of the high and far off time. I didn't time you, I'm afraid. Of course not. It was awful slow, anyway. I was stuck behind a herd of cattle for half an hour. <laughs> Bugger all you can do about that. Who'd have a son? Breaks your heart. I was so sorry to hear your news, sir. Thank you. The fact that he was the youngest made it worse. How old was he? Thirteen. He was lying on the floor of his bedroom. 
Do you mind me telling you this? Not at all. Lying. Lying on his back. He just had a fit. Dead. But he was still warm. And that was a great relief. I'd have hated to have fired. I'd have hated to have found him cold. Does that seem odd? No. Have you news of my boy Jack? Not this tide. When do you think that he'll come back? Not with this wind blowing and this tide. Has anyone else had word of him? Not this tide. For what is sunk will hardly swim, not with this wind blowing and this tide. Oh dear, what comfort can I find? None this tide nor any tide. Except he did not shame his kind. Not even with that wind blowing and that tide. Then hold your head up, all the more this tide and every tide. Because he was the son you bore. gave to that wind blowing at that time.